All right. So now we have the moment of truth. Should we give it a countdown? I'll give it a countdown. In three, two, one. Hey, 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 vaulters, and welcome to the first episode of the Antiquity Vault. We are so excited to get this adventure started with you, but first, we have to show you what we've done in here. We've built this entire studio. It used to be just a concrete walled room. We put up plywood, we got rid of some stairs, and now we have all of these antique signs. We have antique cameras over there. Of course, we're shooting a video show. Donald Duck's up in the corner. He's gonna be joining us for some of our episodes, but this is where we'll be doing everything as far as the showing off of the items and explaining the history behind them, the progress we've made, and then moving on to the next item after that. So with that said, we are going to find our first item today. And it's actually one that I've had my eye on for a long time. It's because every time I walk through to the other side of the building, this one jumps out at me. I'm a coffee lover. I found this really old antique coffee grinder mill and we're gonna learn more about it today. Let's go check it out. Like I said, it's right in the middle of everything, so if you walk by, you cannot miss it. It feels like it's about a lot of pounds. It's gonna be probably 70 to 80 pounds. It's from the Hobart Manufacturing Company. You can see, just by looking at it, you probably put the beans in here, it grinds out, and then there's this little container down here that it goes into. But it's a quarter horsepower, 110 volts. Like I said, very heavy. At first glance, it looks like it has an aftermarket switch, but everything else appears to be in order as far as the original make of this and man is it heavy so now what we're gonna do we're gonna go find out more about this coffee grinder do some research so we can tell you all about it talk about things like where it originated when this company started what else it does and maybe most exciting how much is it worth let's find out so we've got this heavy Hobart coffee grinder into the studio now. I said it was maybe 70 to 80 pounds. Our videographer, me, actually carried it. And he probably thinks it's closer to 60. We'll go, we'll go 60. He's the one who carried it. So we have it here. It's made by the Hobart Manufacturing Company. So let's give a little bit of a history lesson on where Hobart came to be. July 20th, 1897, Hobart Electric Manufacturing is founded. And they ended up being pioneers and real trailblazers in the electric industry. So by 1903, they produced the first powered coffee mill. This is something you used to have to grind by hand, but they partnered with a motor company. I believe it was called Hobart Motor Company. Maybe there's a little bit of a connection there. But they power, partnered with them so they could make this motor and make a powered coffee grinder. By 1913, Hobart was already doing a million dollars in sales. If we want to talk today's money, that's about $25 million. I'd say they were doing pretty good for themselves. And then the Model 28 coffee mill came out in 1918. That's when we start looking like this here. Now there were a few different models, the Model 28, the Model 275, the Model 2020. I would put this at a Model 2020 based on the research I've done, which puts it in the mid to late 1920s, maybe early 1930s. Either way, it's at least 90 years old, I would say and it is in st still in great condition. Look, the original retainer bin is here. You can see there are markings, there are chips in the paint. There's a couple of different rust spots, but it's all original. Everything on here. So this slides right in there where the coffee comes out. It's got the original hopper, which apparently is removable. It, oh, and this here, this is a, ah, oh, this is a switch. So that way you can, you can flip it around and that way you don't drop any coffee grinders and coffee grounds into the retainer bin if you don't want them to fall in there. So you can open and close this. Let's get that back on there before I break something. The only thing I can really see on this coffee grinder that's probably not original is the switch over here. This looks like an aftermarket switch that was put on. I don't know if you can see, but there's a circular hole in here for a switch to go in. And obviously this is a rectangular switch. So the power box is, is aftermarket, but everything else appears to be Original, it's got the Hobart in cursive, a little bit damaged there, but it still looks great. It's still sturdy. I'll be honestly, I, I want to see if we can plug it in and get this thing working. That might be a either a different video, maybe we'll do it later in this video. Who knows? You'll have to stick around. But how it works so, what you do, you open up the top here and you pour coffee beans into the hopper, you close it, and you make sure that you have this open here so the coffee can actually fall into the retainer bin. You can adjust here. It had an adjustable knob on it in the 1920s and 30s, so you can decide how fine you want the coffee grounds to be. Once you have everything set up, you have it set to 
the fineness that you want, have the retainer been in place, you come over here, flip it on, and these beans will turn into coffee grounds. So it's just like the coffee grinder you have at home, just a lot bigger, a lot heavier, probably a little bit slower. But speaking of the coffee grinder you have at home, let's take a look at the progress we've made since this Hobart coffee grinder was made back in the early 1900s. So we don't have a coffee grinder in our office, but what we do have is something that you probably recognize. It's a single cup Keurig machine. A lot of Keurigs going around in offices and in homes now. Maybe not as much as the commercially built coffee grinders were, but we still have a comparison we can make here. So this is 60 pounds. This is maybe eight to 10. This you had to pour the beans into. Grind them out, get the retainer bin, pour the coffee grounds into whatever coffee maker you had at the time. Maybe you put it in a pot of water on the stove. Who knows? Here, you flip it open. You stick, you know what? I don't need to show y'all how to make a K-cup in a Keurig machine. That's not what we're here for. The point being, a coffee grinder in an office isn't that far-fetched. Even something as big as this, especially for bigger offices. But now you have it all in this little 10-pound machine. Five minutes, water's filled. It warms up. You hit what size cup you want, and boom, you have a cup of coffee. You can make 10 cups of coffee in 15 minutes. And it's just the progress we've made. There's coffee pots out there that you can make coffee in a matter of 10 minutes, a full 10 to 12 cup pot. You can grind coffee in seconds instead of having to open up a giant thing, refill it with a big bag. You can just pour a small little bag of coffee grinds that you find at your local grocery store into this little machine and have enough for one pot. It's that easy. There has been so much progress made since the early 1900s as far as the coffee world is concerned. But now we want to get to the big question. What is this vintage coffee grinder worth? I know you've been waiting for it. That's always the big question. Where's the money at? So we did a lot of research. We looked at eBay. We looked at Pinterest. We looked at Etsy. We looked everywhere. We found auction sites. You can find this on a lot of different sites. Most of it was on eBay. So. If you're interested in coffee grinders, vintage coffee grinders, buying, selling, I think eBay's probably going to be the best bet. And if we move forward with selling this, we may put it on eBay ourselves. We'll just have to wait and see. But when we're looking, we found a lot of similar ones. Like I said, there are a few models that this could be. Unfortunately, the model placard was removed from this one, so we can't nail down exactly. But what I was looking for some of the same specs, 110 volts, quarter horsepower, trying to find the same motor. And what I found is there are so many different variations based on conditions, based on what's original, based on has it been restored. So some that looked similar to this, maybe in a little bit worse condition than what we have, could go as low as $300. Those, that was about the low end that I found. That three to $500 range seemed pretty common. And then the next condition up, it was more in the $700 range. But the big whopper that I found on eBay, very similar to this, in about the same condition, Original hopper, original retainer bin. This one may have even had a third party switch. Going for $1,250. So that puts the range for something like this. If we clean this up a little bit, it could be anywhere I would venture to guess from five to $1,200. It takes the right buyer. It takes the right restoration and cleaning up. But this sitting in front of me could be worth more than $1,000. And that is just fascinating for something to stand the test of time for 100 years and still be in this great a shape. Hopefully it still works. We've got our outlet here. I hope down is off. That seems to be standard. We're going to plug this guy in here. Okay, it plugs in. That's a good sign. All right. And so now we have the moment of truth. Should we give it a countdown? I'll give it a countdown in three. Two, one. Wow! Oh! It works! Oh, listen to it, it's beautiful. So we have a coffee grinder from the 1920s that's in working condition. Clean it up a little bit. Ah, oh, this is, ah, oh, that's exciting. Oh, that's so exciting. Me, it works. That's great. All right. Now we gotta clean this up and restore it. If we do end up restoring this, you can bet you can find it right here on our YouTube channel. We are so happy you're here and we hope you'll continue on this journey with us. Remember, this is one of 100,000 antiques in All American Antiques. So we still have so much left to uncover, 
So much history to figure out, so much progress yet to see. So we hope that you'll continue on this adventure with us right here. But be sure to like us on Facebook, All American Antiques on Facebook. You can catch more videos and more content there. Our Instagram, All American Antiques. Every platform you can think of, we want to be on it. So we'll tell you as we grow. But for right now, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe.